there, thanks for joining me to color. Today we're gonna to be doing this adorable shaker card using the new My Favorite Things Secret Santa stamp set. So this is a card kit. So in the card kit, you're gonna get enough supplies to make three of these cards. And you're also gonna get the Secret Santa stamp set. And if you don't like the little boy image, you could also do the little girl image or put both on the pack on your card if you wanted to. But it comes with um, the Santa, the boy and the girl image, a little plate of cookies and milk. I think that's really cute. And then you've got four packages and a little um, stocking here that you could also use to make a card with. And also, I'm gonna mention later on in the video, but these two packages are pretty similar. So when you cut them out, after you've colored them, make sure that you get the right die to cut it out because um, I colored them and then I cut it out with the wrong die. So just so you know, you did make sure to don't do what I, I do what I say, don't do what I do. And then you're also gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six sentiments with this stamp set that you could stamp on the inside. Or if you moved all of this stuff up a little bit, you could put the sentiment um, down here on a little um, flag or something something down here on the bottom. This is also going to come with a coordinating die set so you can cut the little images out. I'm really liking that because there's a lot here so I think that will come in pretty handy. So I'll go ahead and put a link to the card kit and all the supplies I use down in the description box in case you would like to pick something up. But otherwise I have stamped my image on some Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. So let's color. All right, so we're gonna start with our skin. For that, we're gonna use E21, E00, E000. And then for the cheeks, we're gonna use R20. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my E21, and I'm gonna go ahead and start on my little Santa over here. And the skin is not gonna take that much, so we're just gonna go ahead and do a little flick of color on the side of Santa's face. And I'm gonna go between his eyebrows, and then over here, we're gonna go a little bit on this side. And then for the little boy, we're going to do a little bit on this side. And I'm gonna bring my color down around here to his face, and a little bit on his ear. And then I'm also gonna go in between his bangs right here. And we'll do a little bit on his neck, his hand. And he's also got his hand down here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do his feet. Then we're gonna go with E00. And so for our E00, we're gonna go ahead and just fill in our Santa. And I'm gonna probably give him two coats. Up here, we'll go ahead and we'll fill in our boy. I'm just gonna flick right across his entire face, his hand, his neck. We just wanna fill the rest of his stuff, his skin tones in. And then we'll give it a second coat after we add some cheek color. So we're gonna do R20 for our cheeks. And I'm not gonna add any to Santa cause his face is pretty close down here. You could add a little bit right in here. Oh, let's try it. Let's go ahead and add a little bit a few little dots right above his um, beard right here and a little bit to the right of his eye. And then over here, we'll just add a couple of little dots right in that little crevice there. And then for the boy, we're gonna do a couple of little, how it comes down right here and then it kind of tips in right here. We're gonna do a little bit right in here. And then for this side, I'm gonna go, I usually tend to put my pin down in the middle where I wanna start my cheek and then I flick out this way. And then I come back to that same spot and I flick this way. So my pen always touches down in the middle so it tends to be a little bit darker there. And then as I flick out, it gets a little bit lighter. And then we're gonna come back in and we're gonna add um, a second coat of our skin tone. So we're gonna start with our E21. So again, we're just going to do the exact same spot that we did the first time. And our little boy. These are gonna be pretty quick and easy to color up. There's not too much skin on either of them. So you just can do a quick little couple of swipes and you are good to go. Okay, and then I'll go again with my E00. And I'm gonna go ahead and go 
clear across Santa's face. And then our boy. So I always tend to go down on top of my last color, which was our E21. So I make sure when I'm up here, I touch down on E21 and I pull out into my white. That will just help blend that edge a little bit more. So same with this feet. I touch down here where I already colored and I go out here to where I had the light color. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to darken up my pink again. So I do a couple little dabs of my pink over here on Santa, a couple for my boy, and I'm just barely dabbing the top of my pin onto my cheeks. I don't want it to be sit there too long because it will make it really dark and I don't want that. So then I'm going to go over with my E000 and I'm just going to go over these cheeks just a quick swipe over the top. And that's it for the skin. Let's go ahead and do the boy's skin or his hair next. For that, we're going to use E39, 25, and 13. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my E39 for my boy's hair. And his hair, it looks like it kind of right here, it kind of goes in and then it like dips right here. So I'm going to say that his little part is going to be right in here. So I'm just going to put a little mark there just so that I will remember. And then down here, he's got a little bit of his hair showing in the back. So I'm just going to paint that in right now because that's going to be dark down there in the back and we don't have to worry about it. And then we're going to come up here and I'm going to try to keep my pin more up and down. And then I'm just going to come up away from his ear and up towards this part. So up here at the part, let's go ahead and bring a couple of little streaks down. So I'm going to say the part goes all the way over here. So let's go ahead and just draw a little line just so you'll know. And if it doesn't look perfect the first time, let's not worry. We're going to come back with a second coat. And then over here, his bangs kind of swirl this way. So let's go from our line and kind of tip them down in this way. So see how they kind of curve there on the side? Okay, so now I'm going to turn my guy because it's easier for me to color pull towards me. So I'm going to start up here. Well, let's turn him all the way over. That way it'll be a little bit easier for you to see. So now I want my, my color to go across this way with his hair. So we're going to go over here at our part line and we're just going to pull our pin across. So let's go like this and I'm going to try to keep my pin more up and down so that my streaks will not be quite so thick. Okay, and I think that's pretty good for a first coat because I'm going to come back. Next I'm going to do E25. So again, let's go Let's go with our swirls. Let's start here on this first bang right here. And I'm going to hold my pin more straight up and down. And I'm just going to kind of curve them around so they come around here to this part. You don't want them to be straight because his hair is not going in a straight direction. And then let's flip him over. And then his hair is kind of curving a little bit on this side. So you want to make sure that your lines go with that curve. Okay, so far so good. Next, we're going to take our E13 and I'm just going to color the rest of his hair in. So I'm just going to go over the entire thing. You could again do some more swipes, but I just don't, I tend to not like the white streaks in mine. I can't get it to look the way I would like it to look. So I just tend to fill it the rest of the way in. And this will help you kind of to fill in all those spaces, but it'll help blend all those colors together. Then I come back for a second coat of my line. So I'm going to grab E39. And this time I'm going to try to keep my lines a little bit skinnier. So I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to hold my pin again, straight up and down, but I'm going to try to just touch just barely the end of my pin. So again, we're going to go up here. We're going to add a few in here and we're going to curve these around. So they come back around to our part. So again, I'm barely touching the paper. And I'm just bringing some little skinny, skinny lines up 
into his hair. And then I'm going to add another coat of my E25. So again, hold your pen straight up and down. And then try to touch just the tippy tip of your pen and make little streaks. And then up here, I try to hit in a different section, not right over the top of my um, E39, but a little bit, just a little bit in a different spot. And right here, I still have that line, so I'm going to add a couple of extra just because. Maybe right here. Kind of break up that line that you don't have to put that line for his part. That was just so you could see kind of where his part was going to be. But there, and then he's got all those great little streaky lines in there. Let's do his pajamas next. For that, we'll use B97, 21, 41, and our triple zero. So for B97, he's got a little bit of a collar on the edge of his of his outfit here, his pajamas. So I'm just going to go ahead and color that in. We do not need to add anything fancy in there because it's really dinky and there's no sense in you spending hours putting some shading in there. So I decided that we were just going to do our E, our B97 and fill that in this time. And if you don't use your B97 like I don't hardly ever, you might want to pull the cap off the other end just to make sure that it doesn't spill over onto or make one of those little blobs. Okay, so I'm going to turn my boy here and we want to add our B21 next. And so for B21, I'm going to add where I want to add some shadow. So let's go with a little bit here where his arm is touching his pajamas or the body of his pajamas. And then down here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a little bit along the back of this arm. And I'm going to give his pajamas a couple of coats so we don't have to worry if things do not um, blend like you would like the first time. So I'm going to go up right next to the pillow down here on his pajama leg. And then we're going to come down. I'm going to bring it out a little bit more right here. And then we're going to do this leg. And for his shirt, hmm, I might come out a little bit further next time, but let's go with that for right now. And next we'll add our B41. So I go right where I put my B21 and I'm going to go right over the top of that and pull out here more into my white. Same down here. I go over the entire last color and I'm just leaving a white line along the front of his pajamas. And let's go ahead and bring this color out here underneath of our collar. And then I'm going to take my B triple zero and I'm going to fill it in. But I still want to swipe over the last two colors just so it will soften all those lines. And this one's kind of a greenish color, so I want to add that in. So this will help if you go over the last two and add a little bit of that color on top of it. Okay, and we're going to give him two coats, so let's do B21 again. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing. So swipe over the top of that last, where you put it the last time. I think I'll bring this leg out just a little bit more this time. So I'm going to kind of go oh, about three-fourths of the way. And this time, I think I'll bring this color underneath of that collar. But I did a kind of skinny line there so it doesn't go out too far. Next, we'll do our B41. So right over the top of the 21. Pull out a little bit. And even though I didn't, I did up here, filled it in, I went ahead and went over it again. And I think I'll bring this color out to the edge right here, like that. And then we'll take our B triple zero and fill it the rest of the way in. So I'm going to go swipe over the entire pajamas. No. 
nice. All right, and I also wanna do this package up here. So let's go ahead and grab B21. So for our package, let's do right next, we're gonna color the bow a different color. So I'm gonna go right next to the bow and then I'm gonna go underneath this side of the bow. Over here, same thing, next to where the bow is, for the ribbon and underneath the bow. And then since it's got a lid on it, I'm gonna go underneath of the lid and then I'm gonna swipe out from that ribbon. And then again, under the lid. And we're gonna give this two coats like we did our pajamas, so don't worry if it's looking um, not perfect. So again, go over the 21, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this lid. And then down here, we'll go over 21, like this. All right, and then we're gonna go over both of those with our B triple zero. And then we'll give it a second coat. So grab your B21. And I'm gonna go a little bit out further this time. Just flick a little bit past the last time you did your B21 on there. And then we'll add B41. So again, I'm gonna swipe over the entire top here, box. And then over here, we go over B21. I'm gonna pull it out just until there's just a little bit of white left, or just a little bit of an edge along that side of the box. And then we'll take our B triple zero, and we're gonna go over the entire thing. And even though I filled this in up here, I wanna go ahead and flick over the top of that so that it will add a little bit of that greenish color. Okay, then we're gonna grab our B97. And I wanna add some dots. So the quicker you add your dots, the smaller the dots will be, and the longer you leave your pin sit there, the bigger the dots will be. So I'm gonna kinda of make some big dots, so I'll leave it there for a second and some smaller dots. So you just dot it quickly if you want a small dot. So nothing fancy. So bigger dot, small dot. Bigger dot, small dot. And then we want to do the same thing down here on this ribbon that comes down. So let's go ahead and do a bigger dot here and then we'll maybe do a couple of smaller dots and then bigger dots. Maybe a bigger dot right here. Let's do the pillow next. So for that, we're gonna use C4, C2, and our C0. We're also gonna use these colors on Santa's beard. So let's start with C4. And for C4, for our little pillow right here, we're gonna go ahead and go right next to his arm. So I'm gonna to try to keep it pretty small. I'm not going to leave my pin there too long because I don't want it to be a really thick line. We want it to be a little shadow. And then he's got a couple of little lines right here where the pillow has a crease that I put some color in. And then right here's a little wrinkle. So I'm gonna add just a little dab right in the wrinkle. And there's a little wrinkle right here. And then same thing over here. Let's go ahead and do this wrinkle. And then this wrinkle and this wrinkle. Down here his hands kind of squishing it a little bit more. So I'm gonna give that a little dab of color. And then there's a wrinkle right there and right here. Next, we're gonna grab our C2. And for this, we're just gonna to touch down on our C4 and we're gonna add a little dab more. I want the pillow to still be white, so I'm not adding that much. I just wanna soften that edge of that color. So I'm just gonna lightly going along the edge, flicking out a little bit more down here. And now I'm gonna go right next to his arm. I didn't want this shadow right here to be quite so dark, so I saved it till now. right here 
little dabs right there. And then we'll take our C1 and we'll soften those even further. So let's just brush over both of those colors and flick away from those last two and just add a little bit to that edge. And the C0 is pretty light, so you're not gonna see too much. It might be dark at first because it's drying, but after it dries, you won't see very much. And if you're worried about it after that, you could take your colorless blender and just swipe over all of that and it would blend it out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my C2 again and we're gonna add a little bit of shadows to our package over here with these little dots. So there's a little wrinkle in our bow right here. So I'm gonna add a little color right here and then I'm gonna go underneath of the bow where it's under like inside. So a little line right there, maybe a little bit in here Give the center of the bow a little bit of color. And I kind of make the center part a little bit longer. So it kind of goes in a little triangle. So it's longer right here in the middle and then it gets smaller at the end. And then we're gonna add a little daub right here, a line underneath of that wrapper. And then it folds over right here. So let's give this fold a little color. And then under here where the box top is gonna be touching, and I'm gonna do a little bit right along the edge here on the bottom. And then I'm gonna leave that color on there like that and not worry about it. So now we're gonna hop over here and we're gonna do Santa's um, face or his beard. So let's go ahead and grab our C4 and we're going to do, let's add some shadows. So right up here, he's got his little hat and then let's make this, let's see, let's make this part of his beard. So let's add a few little lines in here. And I'm trying to keep him, my pin more upright and not push too much because I don't want the lines to be super um, thick. I want to keep them pretty small. And then right here on this side, he's got his hat, but I think this is space for the background, so I'm not going to color that. So let's go ahead and color this little section and then it's coming down here and then we'll go a little bit underneath of his mustache but his beard's kind of curvy so let's kind of go like this so maybe we'll go a little bit in here and then come around like this Add a few in here. So there's little small lines in there. And then for his mustache right here, let's go ahead and do a couple of little flicks away from his um, nose. And then for his eyebrow, let's add a couple of little bitty lines in there. We don't want them to just be little, like little straight lines. We want them to be kind of curved and add a little bit of color in there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the C2. So let's go up here and add a couple of little spots to his eyebrow. And then we're going to add some to his mustache. And then same for this down here. Remember, it's kind of curved. It's got some lines, so I'm just kind of going along down here and adding a couple of little curved lines in there. And then we'll take our C0 and I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in. So I'm swiping over all those colors and just dabbing in some more color. And this will soften those lines. And then you could come back if you thought it wasn't dark enough and you could add a little bit more of your colors in there for some more lines in. So I'm gonna pop in here and we're going to do his glove. So for that, we're gonna use C8, 7, and 6. I'm gonna start with my 8. 
So I'm going to try to keep it so that there's a little bit of a line because his arm or his hand kind of folds over here. So I'm going to leave a little bit of line so it kind of shows some definition in there because if you use your C8, it's going to make it just too dark. So let's go ahead and add C8 right along here. And see how I left a little line right there on the edge? I'm going to leave that. And then we're going to come up here. We'll add a little bit to our finger like so. And then down here, we'll go next to his sleeve. And then where his hand touches the other hand, I'm going to go underneath of that. Let's go ahead and fill. I'm going to fill this in because there's not much space there. So I'm going to fill in this whole bottom section. And then I left a little bit on his thumb so we could add some color to that. So we'll next do C7. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in his thumb. And then up here, we're going to come along his thing, or his hand where it's touching the fur. And then we're going to go right away from this color. I'm going to kind of go across over here so it has like a little straight white line like that. Next, we'll have C6, and I'm going to take, go ahead and take this color, and I'm going to fill in this line right here at the top, and this one. And that made those little spots on his glove just a little bit lighter. I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's just a little bit of a shading there on the bottom, so it looks like his hand is curved over. All right, let's do some green next. For that, we'll use G294621, and then YG61 is our lightest color. So let's go ahead and start by doing this taller package over here. And you could color your packages any color you wanted, but I'm gonna take my, R, my G30, or G29, and I'm gonna color the top of this package. And there's some ribbon there, so don't color that. And that's what we're gonna use the top of our package. And then we're gonna to switch to G46. And I want it to go away from this ribbon. So I'm gonna flick away from this ribbon. Down here, same thing. Over here. And I may add two coats, I'm not sure yet. And these are pretty dark colors, so you wanna, I'm gonna color the ribbon yellow, so I'm trying to be careful not to get any color on my ribbon. Next, we're gonna go with our G21, so I'm gonna go right over top of our 46, and come out here towards the edge. So I'm leaving a little bit of a white space there on the edge to fill in. Yeah, it's gonna need another coat, I can tell already. Sometimes, depends on how much I, how much ink, or how much I press down on the pen, or how long I leave the pin sit on the paper it depends will make me decide whether or not I want to do a second coat okay so now we're just gonna flick over this white spot fill it in and we will give it a second coat so let's grab 46 And then 21, right over the top of your 46, and right out towards the edge. And then our YG61 to fill it in. So I'm gonna swipe over both of the previous colors. I just kind of run my pen right along both 
and drag it out to the edge. And I tend to do it a little bit slower too so that it adds more ink and it kind of smooths it out a little bit better. So it's not like I'm quickie, click, quickly flicking it over the top. I'm just kind of slowly dragging it towards the edge. And that smooths everything out. So now we're going to hop over here and we're going to work on this tree. So grab your um, G49 or G29 first. And we're going to add some shadows. So let's go. I want to go underneath each of these little branches. So I'm going to go up here at the top. And I'm going to flick down away from the top and add some streaks. And then I'm going to come down to the next branches. So that would be down here underneath of these. And try to keep your streaks going in the direction that the tree is going. Like, see, these kind of trade and go this way. So I'm going to come up here and bring these this way. You wouldn't want them to go this way because the branches are not going that way. And it would look completely funky. Okay, and then we'll come up here. Here's another section that's going downhill. So we'll go underneath those. And I'm probably going to come back and add a second coat so I'm not worried if... I have some spaces. Plus we're going to add a bunch more colors. So this one's got a break there, so I kind of just go up there in between. Okay, and then we'll come down to the next section. So our next section is down here underneath these. And again, keep your branches going with the direction the ones are going underneath. So these down here, I try to go these streaks going with the section down below it. And these over here are switching to go this direction. So again, I will switch my streaks to go with that. And these go this way. So I'm again pulling my streaks kind of at a side angle over here. Okay, we'll try that. Then we're going to come back with G46 and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pin down somewhere on my G46 or my, oh, what was it? G29. And then I'm just going to add some more color in here. So I'm just flicking down, adding some more color. You can come down as far as you want. I'm going to try to hit this little ball right here. Make sure your streaks are going in the direction of the boughs below it. I'm going to try to go around these little ornaments. We don't want to add um, color on top of those because we are going to color those. work our way across to the other side. Some of these are a little bit longer, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull down a little bit more. And I think we'll bring these out past this ornament a little bit right here. So here, these are pretty long, so again, I'm gonna pull down with my streaks just a little bit further.
and put that along here. This one's pretty long, so again, I'm going to kind of make those streaks come down a little bit more. I'll add, since this is a bottom branch, it's going to be pretty shady down there, so let's go along and add just a few more. There, that's looking pretty good. I'll probably add a second coat or come in with a few extra streaks, but we're going to go with that for right now. Same thing for our G21. We're going to come in and we're going to just add some more. So if I have any white spaces up here, I'm trying to make sure to kind of fill in those little white spaces. So like up here towards the top, I had a couple little white spaces up there. So I'm going to go, I just swiped right over the top of those just to fill them in. So like in here, there's some white. So I'm going in and filling that in. I'm going to go around this little ball here. I'm going to try not to color that. here towards the top. I got a few little white streaks up here. So I'm filling these little white spaces in. Hold this down. There's a bunch of white spaces above this little ornament. And then I'm going to want to go underneath this ornament a little bit. I got better this time around. These, this tree is looking better than I already colored this tree once. So he's looking a lot better this time. I got a little bit of practice coloring some streaks of these little lines when I did it the first time. It's always a trial and error the first time I go through. It's like, what's going to work? What's not? So remember, this one's way at the bottom, so I'm going to add a little bit extra. We're trying to make this one not have quite so much white at the end, because it's going to be pretty shadowy underneath that tree. Okay, I'm going to bring this down. Swipe down here. Okay, I'm liking it. Okay, then we're going to take our YG61 and we're going to fill it in. So just to make it easy, I'm just going to go right along the edge there. I don't want to color off of my tree because we're going to um, cut it out, but I don't want to have to try to erase it, even though this color would come off pretty easily because it's pretty light. I'm going to try to keep my color inside the boughs this time. And we definitely don't want Santa's beard to be gr um, green, so I'm going to be careful over there. That's why sometimes I go backwards. Like over here, I'll come over here and I'll color this one in and then go up this way. Just so I try to keep that color contained into the space that I need it to be into. this time so I'm thinking that I'm just gonna add a little bit more of my G29 just a little bit not too crazy just a few extra little streaks just because we put all those colors over the top and it kind of doled out that dark color so if we come back and add a little bit over the top, we're adding a second coat. So it makes it a little bit more defined. And we'll add an, a second or a fourth color. What is this? It'll add actually the fifth color. Even though it's the same color we used, it'll add another color on top and give it a little bit more dimension. A 
let's do some yellow. So we're gonna use Y26, YR23, and YR21 for that. All right, so we're gonna do our packages, bows over here. So I'm gonna start with my Y26, and I'm gonna color in the top of this one. And then I wanna flick a little bit away from this knot. And then we're gonna do the inside of the bow. And a little bit in the center right here. And then we want to add a little bit to these little ribbons coming down from the package and coming up from the bottom. And right here on this package, there's a little space right here that's package wrapping. So I'm going to take my YG21 and fill that in because I forgot it. Okay, then we're gonna take YR23. And I'm gonna go right over the top of my 26 and add a little bit more color because the this one's kind of an orangish color. So we're gonna add that right on top. That. And then we'll take YR21 and fill it in. And I'm just going over the entire bow. And then I'm going to come back with my Y26 and just darken up a little bit. Nothing too fancy, just a little bit. Then we're gonna go over here and we'll do this bow. And again, we'll go with our YR23. fill it in and then we'll go in with our Y26 again and make a little bit just add a little bit of dark a couple of little balls on our tree over here so let's do this one and how about this one and this one now we'll come with our 20 YR23 so again, I go over the top of my 26. And this one I should have made a little bit, maybe not so much, but we're gonna go up here and around. So I've got a little bit of a white space. And then we're gonna take our YR21 and fill these in. So I'm just gonna give them a couple little swirls around the entire ball because I'm not going to give them a second coat so I'm just going to kind of swirl around in there and let's go ahead and do um, the little oh ornaments over here too so I should have done these when I done the pajamas then you don't have to get them all out again so we're going to go ahead and do a couple of little Christmas balls with our Let's do his pajamas next. For that, we'll use B97, 21, 41, and our triple zero. So for B97, he's got a little bit of a collar on the edge of his of his outfit here, his pajamas. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and color that in. We do not need to add anything fancy in there because it's really dinky and there's no sense in you spending hours putting some shading in there. So I decided that we were just going to do our E or B97 and fill that in this time. And if you don't use your B97 like I don't hardly ever, you might want to pull the cap off the other end just to make sure that it doesn't spill over onto or make one of those little blobs. Okay, so I'm going to turn my boy here and we want to add our B21 next. And so for B21, I'm going to add to where I want to add some shadow. So let's go with a little bit here where his arm is touching his pajamas or the body of his pajamas. And then down here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a little bit along the back of this arm. And I'm going to give his pajamas a couple of coats so we don't have to worry if things do not um, blend like you would like the first time. So I'm going to go up right next to the pillow down here on his pajama leg. And then we're going to come down. I'm going to bring it out a little bit more right here. And then we're going to do this leg. And for this shirt, I might come out a little bit further next time. But let's go with that for right now. And next we'll add our B41. So I go right where I put my B21. And I'm going to go right over the top of that and pull out here more into my white. Same down here. I go over the entire last color. And I'm just leaving a white line along the front of his pajamas. And let's go ahead and bring this color out here underneath of our collar. Like that. And then I'm going to take my B triple zero and I'm going to fill it in. But I still want to swipe over the last two colors just so it will soften all those lines. And this one's kind of a greenish color, so I want to add that in. So this will help if you go over the last two and add a little bit of that color on top of it. Okay, and we're going to give them two coats. So let's do B21 again. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing. So swipe over the top of that last, where you put it the last time. I think I'll bring this leg out just a little bit more this time. So I'm going to kind of go oh, about three-fourths of the way. And this time I think I'll bring this color underneath of that collar. But I did a kind of skinny line there so it doesn't go out too far. Next we'll do our B41. So right over the top of the 21. Pull out a little bit. And even though I didn't, I did up here, filled it in, I went ahead and went over it again. And I think I'll bring this color out to the edge right here, like that. And then we'll take our B triple zero and fill it the rest of the way in. So I'm going to go swipe over the entire pajamas. All right, and I also want to do this package up here. So let's go ahead and grab B21. So for our package, let's do right next, we're going to color the bow a different color. So I'm going to go right next to the bow and then I'm going to go underneath this side of the bow. Over here, same thing, next to where the bow is, or the ribbon and underneath the bow. And then since it's got a lid on it, I'm going to go underneath of the lid and then I'm going to swipe out from that ribbon. And then again under the lid. And we're going to give this two coats like we did our pajamas, so don't worry if it's looking um, not perfect. So again, go over the 21 and I'm going to go ahead and fill in this lid. And then down here we'll go over 21, like this. A 
For our red, we're going to use our 29, 17, 05, and 14. Okay, so let's start over here on Santa's little outfit. So we got R29 first. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little dab down here, right next to his beard. And then I'm going to come up here under his arm, or under this fur. I'm going to try to keep that line pretty skinny. I don't want it out there too far, but let's bring this out just a little bit more. Then for his hat, we're going to go right along the inside. And we're going to go up here in a skinny line next to that little crease. And then we want to go over the top of this fur, or the cuff of his hat. It's a good start. And we're going to add R17 to that. And then five. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this little section in. And then we'll take 14 and we'll fill this little section in. And if you wanted him to be darker, you could give it a second coat, but I'm really liking that, so I'm going to leave it like that. And we're going to come down here and work on these little balls. So we're going to do our 29 first. And we're also going to do this rug, so let's go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to go ahead and go right next to my pot, and then I'm going to bring it out here, kind of in a thick line, out to this corner. Same for this side. A thick line out to this corner. Then we're going to add R17 to those. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my R17 around the outside of the ball all the way around. And then we're going to flick up away from this section we already did. So I'm going to widen that out. And then for our rug down here, we're going to go right along the edge. And I'm thinking that maybe I'll do a little dab right here in front of this pot. Okay, and we're going to go with five. So let's go ahead and go around in a circle here. I'm just trying to make sure to hit that edge of that, um, the previous color so that it'll soften it a little bit. And then over here, we're going to add this. And then we'll do our 14 to fill it in. And then we want to do this little package. So again, grab R29 and let's go with a little bit next to our bow. This, and then I think I'll make it lighter in the center of my package. So let's go down the edge like this. And I think I'll do a little dab up here. Mm. 
I should probably do a little bit right here too. Get that started. Okay, then we'll add our 17. And then O five. Fourteen to fill it in. I got a few little lines up here, so I'm just going to go ahead and take my fourteen and smooth it across the entire area. And there is our secret Santa all colored up. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them out with the coordinating dies and we will put our card together. All right, so our next step is to go ahead, you're going to get a little piece of white cardstock in there that we are going to distress. So I'm going to use broken china and faded jeans for that. And I'm going to go ahead and get my little craft mat here. And I'm going to pop the little, I keep my little sponge dauber things on the bottom of my ink pads. So I'm just going to grab that. We're going to start with a broken china first because it's the lightest. And what I do is I grab a little bit and then I start out here on my craft mat. I'm going to swirl it around and then we're going to pull that in here. That way the edge of our paper is going to be the darkest, so grab a little bit more. Start over here swirling, bring it onto your paper. And you're going to do this as many times as you would like. I'm going to go ahead and color the entire sheet. Probably gonna get it everywhere. Grab a paper towel here. I'm just gonna hold the edge of my paper with that, otherwise, my hand is going to be blue. I'm not really loving that idea of my hand being blue. We're trying to make a night sky, is what we're doing. Okay, we're gonna try that. Okay, and then I just peel this off. Let's set that over here. And we're going to grab this one, stick that on there, move that out of the way so I don't accidentally grab it. And we'll grab some of this faded, see I'm making a mess, I've got my hands going to turn blue. Okay, so we're going to grab some faded jeans and again I'm going to just put my paper on here. I'm going to start over here on the edge and then I'm going to bring this on to the paper. Kind of swirl it around, I'm trying to avoid getting some of those giant marks that you know you get when you just put your sponge dauber on there. So again, start over here, swirl it on. I'm probably shaking the camera like crazy. And let's do this little section right here. Okay, I'm liking that. Well, look at that mess that was on the lid. Okay, I'm going to put that over here. And I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to put this one 
back on. And we're going to do this one a second time. So we'll go ahead and swirl over here and bring that on to here. This. Got a big white patch in the middle, so I'm kind of bringing that in there to fill it in a little bit. Okay, I'm liking that. So I'm going to leave it like this. So let's go ahead and put the lid on here. Now that my hand isn't completely blue, I'm going to go ahead and peel these off so I don't forget that that's what color it is. Stick that on there. Stick this one on the back of this one. Okay, yeah, my fingers are completely blue. I don't love that. Okay, so then I have this little distress sprayer thing, and with this one, this the slower you squeeze the little trigger, the bigger the drops, the bigger, the harder, the faster you spray it, the smaller the drops. So I'm just going to give it a quick spritz, like that, and then it gets it wet, and you let it set for a second, and then you take your paper towel and you stick it on there, and you go like this. And you get some great little white splatters. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a little bit more over here. Okay, leave it for a second. And look how blue my paper is. And then you stick it down. Dab up your water. You got this great background piece. So I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch off of each two sides and then we'll use this on our card. All right, so I went ahead and I cut out my pieces with the coordinating dies that you're going to get in your card kit. And also, just before I forget, this one here also has a package that kind of looks, um, the die looks kind of similar to the other package, and I cut it out wrong. So you're going to want to make sure, the first time I did the card, I did the wrong die. So just make sure that you have the right die that goes with this little package, because there are a couple of packages that look, um, there's another one that looks similar to this one, just so you know. You don't want to color it all and then cut it out and be like, oh no, that's not the way it goes. All right, so I got all my parts here and I'm going to make a shaker card this time. So I decided I was going to trim this down and then I decided that it would still be big enough, but you could trim it down a little bit to put, put on the back of your card if you've got too much of the dark blue on here and you didn't like that, but I'm not going to worry about it. So it is big enough to fit on the back. So the first thing I do is that I make sure my card is going the direction I want it to go. And then we're going to go ahead and attach this one to our base and I tape the the top of the desktop good job Heather okay so we're just gonna go along here we're gonna put all of this on here and then we're going to put this on here like so all right, so after you get the little piece attached to this one, we're going to take this piece and we're going to want to attach our piece of acetate to the back of that. So let's go ahead and put some tape runner on this piece here. And I started out, I made my card base white and I thought it looked, I didn't like it. So I decided that we needed to have some patterned paper on our card base so that we could um, wipe that off so that it would have a little bit more color on it. So let's go ahead and put this on here and just smooth that right on there. Like this. Okay. So far so good. So now what we're going to do is we are going to, let's flip this over and let's go ahead and attach this little piece because we're going to want the frame for our window before we do the shaker parts that way we don't have to worry about after we put our foam dots on we'll put all this on first And then to coordinate the window with the back of the card, I went ahead and cut out this little red piece to match this card stock for the bottom, for the window seal. Or the trim. Alright, 
And then we are going to go ahead and flip it over. And what I'm going to do is I have this giant roll of foam tape. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward, or I'm going to go ahead and put all of the tape on there. And then when I come back, we will put the card, um, finish putting the card together. All right, so I went ahead and add my foam tape on here and I doubled it up so there's two pieces. I cut it in half and then doubled it on there. And then what I like to do is I'd like to take my um, embossing buddy here and I like to go along the inside of my tape so that it will remove any sticky residue on here. And I just kind of wipe this sort of over my um, acetate too so that in case there's any static clean, it helps remove that. And then I'm gonna take my sequins, I'm gonna dump those in here. I got a bunch of silver glitter and some white sequins in there. And you'll get a packet of those, um, a little Ziploc bag full of um, sequins that you can use in your card kit. You do need to divide the little bag um, up so that you have enough for each card. We're just gonna remove that. And also when you put your tape on the outside of your shaker window, you're gonna wanna make sure that it all touches so that um, it will keep the stuff inside the window. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little blue piece that we made and we are going to add that. And let's see, I kinda of like this piece, so I want that to show the most. So let's go like this. And we're just gonna stick that to the back. Like this. And then I'm gonna take my tape runner and we're gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back here. And we are going to stick this onto our card front. So let's see what we got going. Okay, I'm gonna put that on there. Put a little shake. Some of my stuff is stuck there on the, see what I mean about the static cling? It kind of sticks to my stuff there on the front, but that's okay. So next I decided it was gonna need some kind of floor. So let's go ahead and put this on here. I went and searched my stash or my paper supply to find this great floor piece. I thought this th would be perfect. So we'll put this down here. Then next we're going to go ahead and put our Santa on. And I didn't pop him up, so I'm just gonna put my tape runner on the back. And let's put him, we've got to have room for our packages, so let's go ahead and put him like, no, I'm going to have him hang off my card just a little bit, so let's put him right here. And then in your in the stamp set, you can also do a boy or a girl, but I chose to do the little boy here, so we're going to go ahead and put him on the back. I thought since we never hardly ever do boy cards, we would just do a boy card this time. Yeah, I'm going to pop him up so it looks like he's standing in front. And let's go ahead and have him come off of the page just a little bit too. And then we're going to have our little packages. So let's go, let's just add some foam tape to them. So I'm going to do this red one in the back. So let's see, we're gonna have to have room for this one. So let's go ahead and do this one right here. And then let's go ahead and do this one next. And I think I'll cut this foam tape a little bit here and put it, and that's gonna be too much. So let's cut a little bit off. And we'll put that over here on the side like this so that it can be over the, kind of on the front of this one. That way it's not too, since I picked, I colored it green, I don't want it too close to the tree so that it kind of stands out a little bit. And then we're gonna have this one. So let's put a piece of foam tape on this. And I'm gonna put this one like that. And I'll save this piece of foam tape for later. And I'm thinking that maybe I better do a little drop of some kind of glue on this and what is it doing it's stuck i left it sit there too long and it dried so we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on this 
side. So once I stick it on the front of this one, it'll stick to this side. Okay. So then we're gonna go this one. I'm thinking I'll put it up just a little bit. So how about right here? And then that little bit of glue will hold it onto this package right here. So again, you could stamp the little girl image and you could put her over here looking at the packages instead of him. But it looks like he just got out of bed and surprised Santa. And the little girl's holding a Christmas stocking. So he just looks surprised and kind of goes with my whole theme here. But there is our little shaker card. Isn't it cute? So I'll go ahead and put a link to this down in the description box in case you'd like to pick up a card kit. And all the supplies I use will also be down there in case you just want to buy the paper or whatever. If you have a question, leave me a comment down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Don't forget to forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit the little bell next to the subscription button so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Otherwise, I hope you're having a fabulous day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.